Sir Jayadev Gala. Sir, I thank you for permitting me to speak on this bill. Even though it's a very small bill and proposed to give some of the left out recommendations of the Law Commission legal backing, I feel it's an important one. But at the same time, I wish to know from the Honorable Minister as to what are the reasons for taking decades to implement the proposed recommendations of the Law Commission since some of the recommendations date back to 1974 and some to 1989. The first point I wish to make is relating to the insertion of a new clause 17A. I welcome this since it applies to every employer irrespective of the number of employees engaged in, in a company, firm or organization, including charitable, religious and non-commercial organizations. But there is a problem in implementation of this since 17A mandates employers to inform employee of his rights to compensation under this act in writing as well as through electronic means, which is a necessity and it's most welcome, sir but there are some practical problems. For example, in companies like construction, infrastructure, and others, the employees are very mobile, and there's no continuous employment like in the organized sector. Secondly, they'll be working either on roads or in forests or hilly or remote areas as well. As an entrepreneur, I strongly support this clause, but as I said, there are some practical problems, sir, which need to be considered. So I suggest for the consideration of the Honorable Minister to slightly change the clause from every employer shall immediately at the time of his employment of an employee inform the employee of his rights to compensation under this act in writing as well as through electronic means. So I just wanted to suggest a small modification. Instead of saying in writing as well as through electronic means, you might be able to say in writing or through electronic means or both at the choice of the employee. So if he has the provision to receive something electronically, it can be done. If he doesn't, at least it can be given in writing without, without breaking the law, sir. So I would suggest that please make it or, uh, either or or both at the choice of the employee. This will serve both the objectives, informing the employees of his rights and eases difficulty in conveying his rights. The second point is about the penalty proposed to be increased from 5,000 to 50,000 rupees and may be extended to one lakh. I think for medium and large companies, this penal provision is okay. But when it comes to small units which employ less than 10 employees, this amount is excessively high. So I suggest for consideration of the Honorable Minister to consider keeping this enhanced limit to units which employ more than 10 employees, sir, and, not for, and leave the existing penalty for below 10 employees. Sir, the bill proposes to delete Section 30A of the Parent Act which empowers the commissioner to withhold payment to an employee if an appeal is filed in the high court. There is a slight problem, sir. Let me explain the practical problem by giving example of AP in Telangana. Sir, cases under this act are dealt with by officials of the Labor Department who do not have much legal knowledge and do not have updated judicial process. Whenever these officers pass any orders, employees have to deposit the entire amount and file an appeal as per Section 30 of the act even though the said order is legally and factually incorrect. If Section 30A is omitted now, the entire amount will be withdrawn by the employees, and in case if the management succeeds in appeal, it will become infructuous, and winning of case will have no sanctity. Hence, this section may be continued without any changes, my suggestion, sir. Please look into that, sir. Sir, the final point I wish to make is for deciding cases under this Act, Powers may be given to the labor courts and industrial tribunals across the country as the officials of labor department are not equipped with judicial knowledge and processes and the corrupt practices are rampant, sir. I hope the Honorable Minister must be aware that Karnataka government has transferred powers to civil courts from the labor department for effective implementation of the act. This will help in improving the general quality of disposal of cases, sir. Sir, before concluding, I just want to mention one thing. In my state of Andhra Pradesh, after the bifurcation, our employee base has become very low, sir. This is Employee uh, Compensation Act, but the employee base itself in the uh, state is very low because, because of the way the uh, state was bifurcated. Most of the industries have been left in Hyderabad. So one of the assurances given by Sri Manmohan Singh Ji in the floor of Rajya Sabha was that we would be getting industrial incentives in line with Himachal Pradesh and, and Uttarakhand to be able to build up our industrial base. But all that has been given so far is 15% additional accelerated depreciation. 
I, I'm, I'm come to understand that some discussions are going on. Finance Minister also mentioned that he may increase that to 30%. But if we don't get the other incentives, it'll be very difficult to attract industries to Andhra Pradesh. So we, are, we request you to please uh, convey to the Finance Minister and to the Prime Minister to please keep up the promises made to Andhra Pradesh and give us the industrial incentives in line with Himachal Pradesh and Uttarakhand. I, I understand that some of the neighboring states are objecting, saying that this will create an unlevel playing field. But I want to make something very clear. We are in an unlevel playing field today. We are in an unlevel playing field because of the way the bifurcation has taken place. To get us to a level playing field is all we're asking, sir. There's no question of disrupting unlevel playing field. We're not in unlevel playing field. So please give us the promised incentives, get us to a level playing field. Then if you want to withdraw, it's absolutely fine with us. So we're only asking for justice to Andhra Pradesh. Thank you, sir.